Hello world and welcome to another video. Come for the education, but please stay for the motivation. Today's video is a continuation of our series on cracking the coding interview. And today we're solving a problem called 3-in-1. It's just saying, use a single array to implement three different stacks. So I feel the best approach is showing you the actual solution first and then we walk through it. But first, our motivation for today comes from Kevin Hart. And I quote, at the end of the day, you put all the work in and eventually it'll pay off. It could be a year, it could be in 30 years, eventually your hard work will pay off. This is for those of us that are working really hard towards a goal. If you're on this channel, you're probably working towards a better job or a better career or just to learn in general. I just want to encourage you to hang in there, keep working hard, eventually I promise you it will pay off. So back to the problem. This is a class called three stacks and it implements the three stacks using an array. So let's go ahead and create an object of this class. So I'm going to call my driver code. I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call him A. It's going to be equal to an object of the three stacks class. And then I'm going to call A the push. And what do I want to push? I want to push to my first stack. Again, you're going to see what this means in a second. I want to push to stack one, the value, character C. We're going to see what this means. Let's go ahead and implement what this is going to do. So creating the object is going to create an object of this three stacks class. And in the constructor, we have a capacity set to two. This just means that each of the stacks in our array would have a capacity of two, can take only two items. Then next, we're gonna calculate our capacity again. We're gonna say capacity equals capacity multiplied by three because we have three stacks in the single array. That's why this three is here. So this is just gonna be six, meaning our array will have six items in total. And we'll go ahead and create our array called items. Items equals norm multiplied by capacity. So this is what items is gonna look like. Let's also go ahead and write the indices of each of these items. Then next, now we have six nons in an array. We're gonna create our start. And he's just an array. This is what he's gonna look like. The first element in him is zero, obviously, from right here. Second element is our capacity, which is six divided by three. Six divided by three, that is two. Then next, we're also gonna create our end array. And similar to our start, and you're gonna see the significance of start and end soon. The first element is capacity divided by three, which we've already calculated is two. Next element is capacity divided by three times two, which is four. And then the final element is just capacity itself, which is six. Let me also go ahead and write the indices to each of them. This is index zero for both start, for both our start and end arrays. This is index one and this is index two. So for our first stack, stack zero, he starts at index zero and he ends right before index two. So this is pretty much the same thing as you drawing a demarcation right here and saying this is stack zero. The same thing, our second stack, he starts at index two and ends at index four. The third one starts at four, ends right before six. Technically, we don't have six here, but it ends right before six. So we can say this is our number two. So altogether, we have created our three stacks with one array, but right now they're all empty. We want to push the value C. Pass it in stack one, and the value is C. The first one says self.item, self.start stack. This looks kind of complicated, but let's go ahead and clean him up from the inside out. So he, this is just something like this. Let's start from the inside. The inside is start of stack. So start, in this case, our stack here is one. So that's one, index one of start. And then we want to find that in items. So what does, let's see what that happens to be. What is index one of our start? This is our start right here. Index one happens to be two. So all that means is that this just boils down to the number two. So now we want to find items of two. So this is our items array. Items of index two is this right here, none. So now we found him, we want to set him equal to val. Okay, keep in mind val is c. That was what we pushed into, sent into our push function. So this becomes c. Then next, we're going to go back. We're going to say start of stack. We've already done that in here, start of stack, which we agreed is two, right? So we want to go into our start array, which is this of stack one. So this item two, we want to increment him by one. So this two in here is just going to become three. So let's go ahead and do this a second time. Let's call, let's push again. Still in the first stack, let's push d. So now we're going back into this function, but now we're still passing into the first stack, but now we want to push D. So we're going to go back in here again. We want items of start of stack. Stack happens to be one. What is start of one? Which is three, right? So this is not two. 
this evaluates to three. So now what is items of index three is none. We want to change him to val, which happens to be D. So we just go in here and change him to D. So then we're also going to go back to start of stack. Again, keep in mind stack is one. Our start array is this array right here of index one, which is stack. It happens to be three. We want to increment him. So he becomes four. So at this point, you can tell for our stack one, he's full, right? We shouldn't be able to push. However, from this code now, if I try to push one more time, it is going to work. It's not going to give us an error. So we're going to have to put an error check for that. We're going to do that when we actually move to the code editor. But let's go ahead and move to our pop. So say we called a dot pop. Obviously, we're going to have to pass what stack we want to pop for. In this case, we want to pop from one because he's the only one who has items in him. The other item, the other stacks, the other two stacks, we left them empty. So we want to pop from one. So how is this going to work? First, we're defining a variable called top. Top is just self.start of stack. Keep in mind we passed in one, so our stack is one. So this is just start of one. Okay, and what is start? This is our start array of index one is four. So this, so that minus one. So this is just going to be three. Then we're going to say items equals to self.items of top. Top is three, right? So that's items of three. So we're going to go into our items, index three. That happens to be a D. Keep in mind this line of code here, you don't need him if you don't plan on returning this item because usually pop returns something. If you don't plan on returning, you don't need this line. But since we plan on returning, even though we don't return in this code, but we will when we move to the code editor. So next we're gonna say self.items of top, which we've already established top is this third guy. Okay, items of top is this third guy equals none. So we're gonna go in here and change him to none. So then we're going to go back self the start of stack. Okay. Stack is one. So this is our start array. That's this four right here. We want to set him to top. So top remember is three. So we want to change him from four to three. So technically we're decrementing him and that's it. So, so we could return, we could go ahead and return item, which is what we're supposed to do. But for this example, we're going to ignore it. However, say I try to pop from an empty stack. So I try to pop from stack zero or stack two. He should give us an error. However, in this case, it's not because there's no error check. We're going to implement him in our actual code. And also the third most common action on stack is the peak action. This peak is really similar to pop. That's why I didn't bother writing him, but we'll write him in our code editor. Without further ado, let's go ahead and move this code to our code editor. This is again the exact same code, exact same push function. I just added the error check we talked about. The first error is to make sure we're not trying to add to stack more than two because remember we only have two stacks stack zero and three stacks i'm sorry stack zero stack one stack two so we can't go higher than stack two because that will mean a fourth stack unless we change this capacity here to four or five but for this exact problem we can only have up to two that's what this is checking for and then the second error is also checking that we don't try to push to a stack that is already full then for our pop we're going to get to him in a second, but first let's go ahead and run this. This is the exact same code and we're just adding C and D. So now let's go ahead and try to push E. So A that push to stack one, which is the middle stack. We want to push the letter E. That should give us an error. Exactly. Value error. And what does it say? It says stack one is full, just like we said in the code. Raise the value error. Stack one is full. So we can push him. So that checks correctly. So let's take him away. Now let's go to pop. Just like we discussed pop, I've added two error checks. The first one is checking that we're not popping because again, we only have, just like our push, we only have zip stack zero, stack one, stack two. We want to make sure we're not trying to pop from a stack above stack two, right? And the second one is also making sure we can pop from an empty stack. For instance, this is the case where we try to pop from either stack zero or stack two that have value of nones. That should flag an error. But so let's go ahead and pop. So we display first, let's pop after we display. And let's pop from stack one. So he returns the value of D because we put, we added the return statement on like on the whiteboard. But let's go ahead and print this. And then right after we pop, let's display what the resulting array is. Okay, boom. You can tell we popped out D and the new array does not have D anymore. So similar to pop, pick is an identical code to pop. The only difference is, like I said, we don't need to save this item in a variable if we're just picking. We just want to see the last item. So we're just returning the last item. So let's go ahead and pick right after. And let's pick from array one. Boom. So the last element 
this is obviously a C as you can tell say what if we try to pick from an one of the stacks that has nothing say we try to pick from stack zero let's see what that should give us an error saying we can't pick from a stack that is empty exactly let's see the error message stack zero is empty can't pick uh, and the error comes from line 32 line 32 where is the error so that's it for the video guys i hope this was helpful and i'll see you in the next one